Gotham Chess just helps me win a spectacular online blitz game. The reason I say that is because I really like his opening courses, and as you may have seen in some of my previous videos, I do play some of his recommendations. This game is no different, where I play the A3 Sicilian, and I have a spectacular game. A really cool attacking game, opposite side castling, throwing pawns at my opponent. I thought I'd take you guys through it, I thought you'd enjoy it. Quickly before we get into the game, if you enjoy my content then please drop a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. As a small YouTuber, um, I'd really like to get to 100 subscribers soon, that would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, with that said, let's look at the game. My opponent plays g6. I was speaking to some uh, friend recently who is a little bit higher rated than me, and he said that he thought this line completely refutes the a3 Sicilian, because b4 is no longer really an idea, because the bishop gets on this long diagonal. But the idea is that you play knight c3 and bishop c4 to clamp down on the d5 square, and the idea is not to let black play d5, or if he manages to play it, to shove the pawn down to e5, cl clamp down on f6, and start a kingside attack. So we get knight c6, d3, this is all very standard, and then e6 is played to prepare d5 at some moment. He can't do it yet, but that's the idea. I go f4, considered an inaccuracy. Um, <sighs> I, I think I got my move order a bit wrong, but could, because I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to play bishop a2 here, uh, with the idea of when the knight comes to e7, I can play h4, because knight e7 is played to prepare d5, and if knight f6 is played, then I can play bishop g5 pinning the knight, and therefore stopping d5. However, with f4 on the board, I can't really bring my bishop out, and d5 is going to come with a tempo on my bishop. So I, I get the move order a bit wrong, but I drop the bishop back nonetheless. d5 is played, and like I mentioned before, I go e5. My bishop is blocked in by my opponent's pawns, but in the future, I have the idea of f5 to try and undermine the 6 pawn and potentially free the bishop's diagonal up once again. So knight d4 is played. I thought this was a strange move. I didn't know why my opponent wouldn't just develop, but I just attack the knight and go, look bro, if you want to trade, I'm more than happy. And he does, because he just played knight to c6, then to d4, and then took me on f3. And all I did was bring a knight out to f3, like that. <laughs> And I get my queen developed. So I felt like it was a bit of a waste of time from my opponent. He goes knight f5. It's a it's a tricky square to get him off of. I can't really play g4 because it weakens my king side too much. And my opponent's knight's just going to jump in anyway. So I go h4 with the obvious idea of going h5. And my opponent plays h5 to stop me from going there. The reason I do this is because I want ideas of g4 in the future. Here, it's not really great, because I don't I don't actually have an attack. But once my opponent castles, it could work. So for now I just go g3, shoring up my h4 pawn, because technically it is hanging, because the knight and the queen are attacking it. He goes b6, with the idea of bringing the bishop to b7, to try and skewer my queen and rook on the long diagonal. I also was aware that there is this maneuver of knight to b5 to try and get into d6, but this knight controls that square too well, and I didn't see a way to dislodge the knight. And even if I did, the bishop can come back to f8 to guard d6, so I felt like it would be a waste of time. Instead, I just go bishop d2 just to develop, and my idea is to castle queenside bring my rook over to the g file, and then start my attack with g4. So bishop b7 is played, and here, because my, my opponent technically isn't threatening anything, because if he goes d4 here, 
the bishop is just straight up hanging. And even if the bishop wasn't hanging, I can bring the knight to e4 to block the diagonal, so I'm not going to lose an exchange. But I decide to keep it on the safe side and go queen f2, just stepping off of the bishop's diagonal. So after d4 is played, again, I go knight e4 as planned, and my position's okay. My knight is actually looking good, and my bishop's diagonal has been freed up a bit because my opponent's moved his d-pawn. And the e6 pawn could become tender in the future. So my opponent castles, and I castle. Computer considers that a miss. It wants g4 straight away. And after h, ta h takes g4, h5, just blasting the center open. No, not the center, the king side, sorry. But I castle, because I want to get this rook into the game to help out with that same idea. My opponent takes on e4, which I thought was a very strange move, because I now take back with tempo. Whilst my knight was a nice piece, his bishop was also very nice, because it x-rayed my rook. And now when he moves his knight, I play f5. This is only a mistake if my opponent finds knight g4 attacking my queen. I move my queen to say e2. Then he can't take on e5 because my bishop comes alive um, through e6. So he has to here find queen d7 to defend the pawn. That does allow ideas like f6 though, which it looks kind of scary. Or maybe I can even take on g6, or I can just keep the tension. Maybe I can play something like bishop f4. It looks really counterintuitive to allow me to just shove my pawns in his face. So he takes, because when I take back, he can take with the knight and it looks like I'm running out of play because if I go g4 he just takes it and ideas of like e6 can just be met with takes takes and king h7 and I don't actually have an attack if anything the lines are opening up against me like with my opponent's rook potentially d3 at some point and not to mention that I am down a pawn so after he takes to the knight I play g4 anyway which is the only move black can't take this black needs to move his knight somewhere to get out of the attack e3 is the computer's choice where after this this my queen is hanging and my opponent's queen is hanging so i'm supposed to take the pawn and after the queen moves take on h5 but why would anyone go for this i don't really blame my opponent for just taking but here i've got h5 again the only move because i need to open the king side up asap my opponent also can't take because his knight's hanging it's only defended by one pawn and as you can see, my bishop is now incredibly active now that the e6 pawn has disappeared because it took on f5 and the d5 pawn advanced to d4, which means that this pawn is pinned to the king and is no longer defending g6. So after knight e3, attacking my rook and trying to get me to take on e3, where, again, if my opponent takes on e3 with the pawn, my queen's under attack, so I've got a waste of tempo taking back. And we'll get this position, which is winning, no doubt. But it's not quite as winning as just taking on g6, which is a brilliant move, because I am sacrificing my rook here. And if my opponent takes the rook, then I actually... <laughs> I actually have mate in two if I just take on f7, which I I, I missed. Um, I played queen h2, but the idea is pretty simple. I'm just getting into his back rank. This pawn can't move because it's pinned by the bishop. 
So my opponent plays rook e8, which is the only move. So after queen h7 check, the king can try and run to the dart squares. Here I find bishop h6. And if my opponent takes it, then the queen takes here with check. And after king e7, I can take on f7, attacking the rook. And if the rook tries to save itself, then queen to e6 is checkmate. So, my opponent plays queen d7 instead, with the idea of freeing up this escape route for the king. Again, this knight is still just sitting on d1. It can't do anything, and I also don't want to waste a move taking it. So I take on g7 with the bishop. I could have taken with the queen, and this is mate. But... The reason I didn't do that is because I actually only saw this. I didn't consider queen f6 for some reason. Just a bit of a blind spot. And then after the king goes to d8, he's surviving. So instead I take with the bishop and then play bishop to f6 check. Where the king can't go anywhere because the bishop is slicing through. And this bishop is slicing this way. So we have to go back to f8, and then pawn to g7 is quite a quite an aesthetic checkmate, right? Like my bishop's just doing absolute bits, and he's just mated. I thought this was a really, really fun game, um, especially because this line is considered just to completely refute the a3 Sicilian. It's not that simple. It really isn't, because... For as much as my opponent can try and close down the king's side and castle safely, once I get this pawn mass on the move, he's got to be very accurate and he doesn't find the correct moves and he just gets slaughtered. And this guy is, you know, rated over 2200. So any of you guys that are watching that are below 2200, which is, no offense, probably the majority of you. Just because the computer calls an opening bad, you know, it says that it's equal, and as white, you don't want it to be equal, you want to be better, doesn't mean you shouldn't play it. If you enjoy the structure, if you understand it better than your opponent, you can make stuff happen. If you stuck around to the end of the video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.